Hello everyone, this is Trey Renee with Trey's Hobbies again, and as I said, on New Year's Eve, I'm starting up several new writing projects for us. The first is an editorial tutorial on how to make your second draft of a book better than what the web draft, first draft was, and this is going towards a second edition of The Ancients Return, Book 1, Past Hours. And in the future, I'm going to start writing Book 2. So, what I'm going to be doing is, in this series, I'm going to be reading a chapter, starting with a prologue, and then after I do that, I'm going to start make the, like, take it. Take a pen, a highlighter, note cards, whatever, and s scribble down notes in the book, the book, and say, okay, change this character's way of talking. Make her dress look better. Describe a this scene better. And that's what I'm gonna do in the future. So before I start reading the prologue of the book, the book, I'm gonna please subscribe, like, comment, and leave any positive criticisms you have in the comments below, and ring that bell button. So here we go. Pesos, book one. The, an the Ancients Return, Book 1, Past Sours. Okay. Even I get the title wrong. By my previous previous self, Trevor Eichhardtian's first edition, second edition will be by me, Trace Renee, because my previous self, Trevor Eichhardtian's, doesn't exist anymore. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Prologue. Heritage of, rea of royalty. The night surrounding the whole of the newly founded northernmost kingdom and the central building of the Iridian castle was as bright as day. From the first full moon that had been seen by all those that had come to this land. They had come from all across the the large landmass that was known as Dribond to call this place home. And at this time they had all come to in the hope of finding more freedom and to have their own land that they could not have within the old homelands. Other than the new moon that hung high in the sky, there were great and heavy clouds that foretold of a torrential downpour that would begin at any moment's notice. This did not do anything to hinder the great celebration that was occurring within the castle itself. That was the origin of what future generations would come to know as the Week of Ancient Origins. The castle itself had carved from the various types of rock and stone that could be found within the mountains that surrounded the kingdom upon its farthest northern border and crafted from the metals that were Quarried and smelted from the eastern valley. The masons and quarrymen had been the most prestigious that any sapient race had ever known. They had been regaled as the paternal and maternal organizations known as the stone reapers and the extractors. Of course, taste of this 
finally a Sobarian line comes at the conclusion of to the horrendous stuff that has been done by those masters and mistresses of their craft. I wish to give a great and heartfelt appreciation to them for all of their work on behalf of my father and myself. They could have given something that was not a piece of art, but they had held true to their craft and faith to give us these fine pieces of construction. The very elderly and hunched over first lord of this new kingdom gave a toast gave the toast to in his still very strong and bass voice that was able to carry through the entire dining hall. Oh, of his castle. He raised his finely crafted crystal and erudite vest high into the aromatic and smoky room as did every other man and woman within had done and in unison of his action. I'm checking for the next chapter. God damn. The prologue is long. Upon retreating to his seat, he bent over to speak to with his younger wife some part on some part of these festivities. She was much younger than he was by some twenty years, and her glorious body was Looked upon, was looked upon by the man that she passed with complete desire and lust. Oh. Several of the more handsome of these men would often find themselves within her bed as the radiant king had his own fill of the other women that would have him at his advanced age. Neither one of them thought any of it because it spread their populous bliss through with let me repeat that because it spread their royal seed further into the general population. However, the only noble children that they would accept were those that were born of these two people. It is excellent. It was an excellent toast, my good husband. Let us enjoy our meal with one another. Once we are done, we can take a tour of our new home with the headmaster and mistress of the extractors and the stone weepers being our guides. I, ab I agree, but we must not forget that the guests that have come for our housewarming celebrations, he replied as he allowed the servants to prove his dishes with the delicacies from all across the Jabon continent and the kingdoms that were upon it. He was proud that his late father had seen fit to give him his own lands to rule over before he had died some fifteen years ago. As the guy that Nobles and common folk had just finished the main meal. A squad of the newly formed militia soldiers came into the banquet hall and formed up along both of the walls that surrounded the room. They were all in splendor with their brightly colored dress uniforms and their steel sabers hanging from their sides. Two of the men that were the commanders of these 46 men and women that had sworn to protect these young provinces, provinces from any ex outside harm and to serve those of the noble blood, without question came forward from the 35 for tall noble double oak and iron doors and down the central aisle 
of seated guests and the food and drinks. Neither one of them glanced to either side as they moved between them, but they had heard the discussion that the show of military protection had brought out. <sighs> Whew, it's long. These common and royal visitors to this castle stopped speaking as the two bowed before in respect to the Iridian king and queen of the Unforgiven Kingdom in respect. Ooh, un the Unforgiven Kingdom, okay. And let me just see again. Page. Nope. Oh my gosh, did I have about six more pages? What is it, Sir Kionshi? Did I tell you to not disturb this feast? The king asked as he stood with trouble from his chair. He could sense that something was amiss, but he could not tell what it was at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me? My lady and Lord Xanthaxia, we have just been told that an army of has just been seen coming from the west. The first birdly knight responded as he stood to his full height of five and a half feet. He was slender and wiry in stature that had allowed him to survive through many border confrontations throughout his decades of life. They are coming to attack us with a Push that is much greater than what we have at the moment. We do not have any further details on who they are, but for the banners that could be seen, the designs upon these flags are some of the demonic creatures that surround it by a burning hand. Well, mount whatever resistance that we can for the moment. We need to start drafting our citizens, as it becomes necessary to defend our homes from the invasion. Just as the elderly king had finished giving these orders, the first founders claps of conflict were given beyond the gates to this grand fortification. <coughs> as the first drops of the torrential and effective storm that had been brewing for most of the day came down. The brilliant bursts of deep bluish green flames drew the attention of the royal court and everyone else that was gathered within the dining hall to the gigantic rectangular windows that were painted with medium sized squares of refractive stained glass. They could make out very little of the scene that was before them. But for the beginnings of the violent confrontation that was to come, these were the myriad of war machines the rain of arrows and the flames that were popping up that were beginning to burst into life all across the landscape that appeared to be alive in the march towards the Iridian castle. God, I thought I wrote these better. Those that were controlling these great machines were thought to be from the Western Kingdom of that time without any real answers being given by their banners and familiar coats of arms due to their darkness of to the moonless night the inner party of the building 
It could only tell that there were such flags by the illumination given by the constructed devices of destruction. Every living creature within the walls of the castle had been stricken as if they were touched by the hand of a single Medusa. The new lord was the first to regain his composure and to give out the orders that would protect the building and the surrounding land from becoming overwhelmed by the opposing and conquering forces upon its first night of being inhabited. He called for the newly created militia to begin drafting every able bodied man and woman into the service to defend against these unknown foes that had sought an easily exploitable opportunity. He had also asked the Allied crafters for their aid in developing appropriate means of defense and offensive protection from them. It had taken only a few hours that appeared to be an eternity for a complete tactical array to be created that could hold off this attacking force. If the other side was unable to completely decimate the ranks, the latter was taken as a grain of salt for all those that were involved. But this hope was given in material form by the leading charge of Nanashu Kianshi. He had. I need another drink. <sighs> this really takes a long time. <coughs> Damn, I didn't realize how much I wrote. He had become a legendary figure that had become detailed within more than a hundred songs and told tales told by many bards of the world. This was from the method in which he had come to where to be where he stood as a victorious leader of the newly constructed Iridian castle within the unforgiven kingdom. He had been given this honor by those that he had served throughout the years. At the final moment, before they would strike out against their foes in a single line that would spread out into a prince of maneuver that would be able to collect the ranks of the opposite side into a singular line, eight messenger pages were sent forth to find those that would be more cap than capable of sending aid and supplies for the desperate cause. This was just a new strength of hope that was given to the defensive militia and citizens that were up against unforgiving odds. Before the lowest strength servants could be brought to their deaths, the militia was called to move forward with the primitive targets being the machines of conquest as well as for their destruction. It had taken them more than two hours for those defensive lines to depart the 75 foot long and 50 foot wide gates. The archers and other ranged attackers were dwindling the opposing forces by the hundreds that gave way to mere moments worth of their becoming distracted by an unexpected amount of retaliation. It was just the amount of time that was the close range defenders would need to square themselves up into their lines of javelins and spears to puncture the front lines of the oncoming army. To help bring there, to bring fewer and fewer of the attacking force within the short range of the palace. These two lines had been capable of causing a great amount of confusion and 
to weaken their amazingly large army by more than 5,000 of their soldiers. But the defenders had lost too many of their own people to call it anywhere near a satisfactory display of force. So Kianji had to recall them to regain their own ranks as soon as possible. But this allowed him and those that would charge into Mali combat to increase their morale for what was to come. Midnight broke with the storm touching every one of their bodies and faces of both sides that were dead, living, and wounded. The, the, le the leader of the Unforgiven Kingdom's militia could not comprehend what this omen could mean for his people and the singular battle, but could only understand that he must not allow it to alter the events of this night, or he would gain the first defeat of his life. He gave the single signal for his troops to move forward and bring the final breath of life like to as many of these attacks as possible. He himself kicked the stirrups deep into his dire roar lion's hide that would propel the pair into battle. He withdrew his train, great and wound covered battle blades. The blades from their scabbards as the first drops of his mouth's blood came forth from where the animal had pre had been punctured. Huh. The pair were able to take down 18 attackers before the first 20 soldiers had exited from within the protective walls. Their single event could possibly be seen as an original turning point for this single conflict. Though none involved within it knew at the moment, th this battle continued until the very first rays of dawn broke over the horizon. It was those that sought to conquer the newly born castle that gave in to retreat and first, and those that had been defended against them that gave a great cheer. This victorious battle allowed them to keep all of these original buildings intact with the help of other kingdoms that would come to answer the call for assistance. They did not know within that first month that they would be recruited as a military power and those that hoped to begin the war of despair. It was a half year later that the alliance of the stone reapers and extractors broke, was spoken for their views upon the war and the sides that their leadership and individual members would take within it. They had lost their own honorable nobilities as well as many of their greatest lessons learned within the 50 and more millennia that they had been able to survive. <coughs> and that was just the prologue. I love this story. Oh my god. Uh, I have to see where I can take the prologue down and separate it out into possibly two se two or more sections because that was an info dump <laughs> basically we have now have a history of the landscape and we have several names we have a lord a an unnamed lord and his queen to and queen stated we have the 
we know that they had a small um, militia to begin the war with. <laughs> and that the Iridian ki ki Kingdom on Drabond continent was new when the upcoming War of the Spirit w was just beginning. And we know that there were demons on this co uh, in this world. And we know the name of the great, of one of the greatest night lords, lord knights, or however you say it, in the story. But we know that the good people and the lord knight beat off the demons and whatever these enemies were with the horrific mach machinery of destruction. We know that. So what I have to go through next is go paragraph, sen sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, and page by page to see <coughs> how I can make it easier to read. And I'm going to do that by, like I said, using a pen, notepad, note cards, highlighter, whatever and going through making these notes even within the book itself because I own that book. <laughs> if it gets too bad I'll simply buy another copy from my old self which I don't know where that money's being sent. <laughs> so, so I'm not telling you to buy the, that original copy. However if you do want to please let me know in the comments below and also feel free to like and subscribe to Trace Hobbies, bloody blah. I'm also looking for your crit your criticism and your suggestions for the book as well. And so, but what's also going to happen is that I'm going to start doing a incarnate map for the continent of Draband. And so I know what each of these areas are, what the continent looks like, these kingdoms, <laughs> and however, like, even the map itself is going to change the book, its book, because, like, I already have different ideas for how the Iridian Kingdom them is going to be developed. And you'll see that that later on. Um, and then, like, I'm also going to use World Anvil to put in the information about the continent, the kingdom, the different characters, the government, everything I can. can. And even the Dire War Alliance and Dire Alliance are a thing in this setting. And then, <coughs> like, and so, like, going, all this is going to help change the book itself. So, after the however many videos it takes me to show what I've changed in the changed for the prologue, I'll reread the prologue as it is, and then I'll allow you to make po some more criticisms and suggestions for things to change. But, I have it like, as the, as I continue to read this book and the chaos, chaotic show, um, books, I'm going to be hoping that you do some fan art for me, me and, be suggest and be suggesting some things you'd like to see coming up. Because, as I can, can tell you, there's some very interesting stuff that will happen into this book. And some stuff that I want to develop 
early on, like in the prologue. <coughs> so what I'm thinking of doing is creating a history section, a timeline section possibly, and a glossary section. And then like also have like um, several maps, like say that like use dungeon fucks for the cast so for like for layouts and what have you. you and then to go from there so hopefully <laughs> I'm hoping in fi about five different videos to go back in to go back and completely read you the new and updated prologue that I fucked out and then like say after I have the in okay after I've read the entire book and made the edits that that my personal edits and all that and looked at your and put in your personal suggestions and criticisms, I'm gonna make the a PDF available to my subscribers basically and asking for you to read it and give me feedback on it but I'm probably but I'm gonna say about like developing a simple way to have you pay for the PDF though like on drive through RPG or something that way you don't I don't have to worry about stuff because I don't want to blame anyone for doing anything wrong. So, like, and then, like, going, I'm going to take the cover image here and redo it. So, that way it looks good. good. And I'm also going to use, like, my miniatures to give both a good idea. Well, that's it for for this first video. You and if you're looking for this video in my playlist, it's gonna be under all videos and tutorials. And I'm thinking of actually and books and like book book reads or something or readings or something. So thank you everyone. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment, leave positive criticisms, and hit that bell. And please watch for my other videos. And I hope you have a really great new year and a great day. This has been Trace Renee with the Trace Hobbies. And I'm hoping to see you much more often. And please feel free to have your friends and family subscribe. And have a great new year.